Hey guys, welcome! I'm Dr. Gonzalez and today in this video we're talking about the following topics. Let's review what are the body fluids. First of all, the body fluids, it's basically the water in the body and the particles that are dissolved in that fluid. So we can divide it into two major types of fluid. The extracellular fluid, also known as ECF for short, and the intracellular fluid, also known as ICF. The extracellular fluid makes up one third of all of the fluid and the intracellular fluid makes two thirds. So when we say extracellular and intracellular, let's take a look at this picture we have at the bottom. If we take a look at a single cell that comes from the tissue of this person and we zoom in into this cell membrane, you're going to see that inside the cell we have fluid and then outside the cells we have fluid, right? So the fluid inside the cell, it's also known as the cytosol, but we also call it the intracellular fluid, intra as it's in inside the cell and then the extracellular fluid is that fluid that it's outside surrounding the cells thus extracellular fluid first of all remember that the body fluids flow in arteries veins and lymph vessels for example as well as these body fluids are going to be secreted into specialized compartments such as joints the cerebral ventricles and the intestinal lumen. The work, the proper work of function or functions of the body fluids is to surround and permeate these cells. It also works as lubricant and solvent for metabolic chemical reactions, uh, also dealing with tissues. Uh, transporting oxygen, nutrients, chemical messengers, and waste products to their destination, and most importantly, regulation of body temperature. In a sense, uh, fluid and electrolyte balance is necessary to maintain life, and whenever we have, for example, fluid loss or electrolyte loss, uh, when, for example, when you're doing exercise, your body is going to activate certain mechanisms so that you can have fluid intake and, of course, replenish the electrolyte uh, loss, so electrolyte intake. So that is going to be regulated by thirst mechanisms, right? for example, for fluid intake. Also, um, for electrolyte intake, it's going to be governed mostly by dietary habits. And these two are controlled also thanks to the digestive system. And then in the sense of fluid output and electrolyte output, this is going to be regulated mainly by the kidneys um, as part of your urinary system. So in order for us to have a fluid homeostasis, there's going to be a dynamic process that results from the interplay of four sub-processes. First of all, we have fluid intake. We have fluid absorption. We have fluid distribution. And we have fluid excretion. That's how we balance our fluids. So in, another, in other words, if we take a look at this picture right here, fluid intake could either be this person drinking water, also fluid intake by an IV, as well as when we breathe in, our lungs are capable to also obtain some kind of water molecules. Now, on the other side, that's gonna be the intake and on the other side, we have the fluid absorption by our digestive system. Then we're gonna have the fluid distribution thanks to our blood vessels, lymph vessels. And then we have the fluid excretion thanks to our skin when we sweat. 
thanks to our lungs when we breathe out. And also thanks to our kidneys whenever we go to the bathroom, right, to urinate um, and we have fluid loss um, also through the bowels, right, when we go to the bathroom as well. In worst case scenarios, there's also fluid loss through abnormal routes. In the case of control of body fluid distribution, the distribution across cell membranes is going to be determined by osmotic forces, mainly from electrolytes. But in the case of distribution across these capillaries right here, the, it's going to be determined by hydrostatic and colloid osmotic forces. Going back to those osmotic forces, remember those concepts of cell volume in which we have isotonic or no change. We have hypertonic in which the cell shrinks and we have hypotonic in which the cell swells. Now let's go into a short discussion break. Some of the issues you're going to see is, for example, in terms of volume, right? you can see too much, also known as an excess, or too little, also known as a deficit. Another situation is the concentration that could be altered, or the electrolyte composition that either can be too much or hyper, or too little or hypo. The etiology of the situation is going to be a result of many different pathophysiologic conditions and some of the symptoms could cause clinical problems and even death. Some of the hormonal influences on body fluids are going to be the antidiuretic hormone or ADH, aldosterone and the natriuretic peptides. Starting with the ADH, this one is produced by the hypothalamus, but in reality is released by the posterior pituitary. The work of ADH is released. When it's released, um, it's to um, increase the water reabsorption and reduce the urine volume. It is typically released um, when, for example, there's an increase in the extracellular fluid concentration um, and also stimulated when there's a decrease in the circulatory fluid volume and when there's pain or nausea. And typically, ADH will target the kidneys, sweat glands on the skin, and the arterioles uh, in order to constrict. The second hormone is going to be aldosterone. This one is produced by the adrenal cortex, which are on top of the kidneys or superior to each kidney, yeah, the, also known as the adrenal glands. Um, the release is going to be stimulated by angiotensin II, part of the RAAS uh, system. And when there's an increase in the concentration of potassium in plasma, and it causes the renal tubules to reabsorb sodium and water. It also causes a decrease in fluid excretion and a decrease in urine volume. And last but not least, another hormone that influences the body fluids is gonna be the natriuretic peptides, also known as ANP and BNP. These two are produced in the heart, particularly ANP, it's produced in the atriums, Meanwhile, BNP in the ventricles, and the release is going to be stimulated when vascular volume increases, and these natriuretic peptides are going to cause the kidneys to excrete uh, the increase in that fluid, and or uh, it's going to be stimulated when the vascular volume decreases and so this NP is going to cause the kidneys to excrete the uh, fluid. 
Well, that's it for this video. I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And also comment if you have any questions or suggestions about this topic. And also, if you like this shirt, it's now available on my Etsy shop, Queen Mary Anatomy. That's it for today. Thank you for watching.